Well, today we're going to have a, uh, an overview of porcine epidemic diarrhea virus, um, where our status is, what's going on with the research, and what our next steps are. So to start from the beginning, um, PED was confirmed in the United States on May 17th, and that occurred at the USDA National Veterinary Services Laboratory in Ames, Iowa. Several veterinary practitioners had identified the virus in early May, and when they got the diagnosis back initially, um, it was not what they expected, and that set in motion uh, things to go ahead and eventually end up with diagnosing and identifying PED. When we looked at trying to understand the origination of the virus, when the full genomic sequencing was completed, it was found that the strain that was identified in the U.S. was 99.4% similar to a Chinese isolate that was deposited in GenBank, which is a, a, a database of all different kinds of pathogens. And that was back, uh, that strain was initially identified in 2012. And so what that tells us is that virus has an Asian or a Chinese origin, but it really doesn't tell us where specifically or how it got here. And so as we look at PED and the epidemiology of the disease, the virus is spread through the fecal-oral method of infection, which means that an, a naive pig has to be in contact with infected manure from an infected pig. Um, and so the virus does transmit through manure, but anything that can be in contact with manure can also be a potential source or vector for that infection. One thing that we have looked into is that PED does not affect pork, and it is not a food safety or a public health issue as it does not infect humans. And so PED is purely a disease of swine. It doesn't matter what type of operation or size of operation. All of the pigs within the United States, um, when we first identified it, were naive to the virus. So what does PED do once it infects an animal? Uh, unfortunately, the baby pigs are the ones that experience the highest mortality, and usually you'll see baby pigs that are still nursing, so anywhere between three to less than four weeks of age. And the reason is is because the, the infection, the virus attacks the lining of the guts and basically makes it impossible for the baby pigs to absorb the nutrients from their mother's milk. And what we have seen and heard from different uh, farms and practitioners is that there can be a range of loss of production anywhere between four to eight weeks and sometimes even longer as the virus works through the system and through the farm. Clinical signs that we do see include diarrhea and vomiting in all ages of animals. However, when we start to look at the older animals, such as nursery pigs, uh, which are typically four weeks of age or older, grow finished pigs, and then our adults, sows and boars, we don't see the, the de death loss associated with PED, but the animals do experience a loss of growth and growth performance, and also we can see an impact on reproduction. And so it does affect all ages of animals, but mortality is more confined to neonatal or baby pigs. On the other side, we have been looking at how immunity is developed, and it does appear that once animals go through infection and survive, that they do develop immunity within three to four weeks after that initial infection. However, one of the things we're still trying to study or still studying is how long that immunity lasts because that will impact how well and how quickly we can clean up these herds and get rid of the virus off of the farm. So where are we at today? Obviously, PED is still a major health challenge for us. Uh, as of last week of July 9th, there has been a total of uh, 7,600 cases of PED reported. And now one of the questions is, is that the number of farms? And that is not. The cases are just literally uh, diagnostic cases that are submitted to a veterinary lab for confirmation of PED. And so they, they may represent a farm more than once. They may be repeat testing or it may be singular testing. So all we can say is that's the number of, of cases that have been submitted to a D lab and it does not represent the number of farms. 
So currently, 30 states across the U.S. have reported positive cases of PED, and that really encompasses all of our major swine-producing states. Now, most of that data that is, it has gotten from the USDA known laboratories or National Animal Health Laboratory Network can be found at www.aasv.org. With some changes this summer, after June 5th, PED and porcine delta coronavirus, which are considered swine enteric coronaviruses, are now reportable to the USDA. So if a case is identified as positive at a veterinary diagnostic lab, that will now be reported to the USDA. And that way we will start to be able to get some uh, positive identification of the numbers of farms that are affected with PED. From a pork board perspective, uh, where we're at now is really focusing on research of the virus, so the basic sciences and applied sciences, communication of those research results, and then development of outreach information. And then lastly, with a lot of our other stakeholders, is the development of management and containment strategies, again, to try to get this virus under control. So this map just shows you, uh, with the exception of Virginia, uh, basically all of the different states that have had positive cases identified in them. So what have been our research efforts? Um, as of June of 2013, our board has approved more than $3 million for use specifically for PED research. We've had additional funds from state associations and also re more recently from the feed industry. Um, we are working with other agencies and organizations, both here in the United States as well as Canada, to really coordinate and collaborate on our research priorities and trying to make sure that all of us optimize our funds and avoid unnecessary duplication as much as possible. When we first identified PED, we really did not have any information about it because it was new to the U.S. And even though it's been in other countries such as China, Korea, and Japan, just to name a few, there is very little information out there about the virus. And so that's why the board really made the aggressive decision to put money towards the, the research to understand the basic properties of PED, how it is spread and transmitted, how is immunity developed, what are risks from other ingredients such as feed and feed movement systems, and how do we best diagnose and grow the virus so we can have the best diagnostic test to detect it quickly. Um, the other thing with our diagnostic tests is we're using them on a lot of different samples. So it's not just pig samples. It's out in the environment, swabbing trucks, looking at manure, trying to test feed. And so all of those types of tests need validation to make sure that we are accurately finding the virus. So with a lot of this research we've done last year into this year, what do we know so far? Um, we do know from a laboratory experiment that the virus is shed pretty much in the peak groups about five to six days post-infection, and most of the animals stop shedding after 21 days. However, this was in nurse or basically four-week-old piglets that were weaned, um, and since then there's been a lot of other studies that show that some pigs can still shed virus up to 30 days or more and not have clinical signs. And this is an issue for a lot of practitioners and producers when they're trying to decide when do we clean up these herds because these animals do appear to shed some virus for a little bit of an extended time period. Um, when a pig is infected, especially baby pig, a very large amount of virus is shed early on but on the flip side, it takes a very small amount of virus to cause an infection and infect other herds. And so that is also something of concern. We do know this is not a respiratory tract virus. It is only in the gut. And therefore, it does not appear to tr have true aerosolization. However, some evidence suggests that it can move in the wind on dust particles and even in moisture particles. And so there's still ongoing research to really look at what's the risk of proximity for many farms. Um, again, I bring up immunity. We do know it's developed, but we're still learning about duration um, and how to measure that level of immunity both to protect the sows and the piglets. 
Again, we've confirmed that it is spread through contaminated manure and anything else that that the manure comes into contact with. Um, obviously, r spread can happen very rapidly in high hog dense areas, but we've also seen it spread in other areas where we would not expect infection. So it's been a pretty confounding virus. When we look at survival under laboratory conditions, the virus does like cold conditions. So under freezing, the virus can live for a long time period. We also know the virus can survive in dried and slurried feed. Dried feed, it can last about seven days. But in slurried feed, we know it can last at least 28 days. Same thing with feces and water. Um, we know the more wet the virus is, the longer it will last. For manure slurry, we know it's at least 28 days. For feces, it was only seven. Um, but there is some time, you know, obviously an ex expanded time frame for that virus when it is in water or in moist conditions. When we look at other interventions, such as how do we get rid of the virus in a trailer, a, a transportation trailer, there was experiments that were run that showed if you heat a trailer to 160 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes, that will kill the virus. Um, and that trailer experiment also was done with the trailer not being washed and disinfected prior to the heat treatment. Um, we do know there are disinfectants that can kill the virus, and that research is still underway. But there are different products out there that are listed both on the AASV.org website that will kill it and have an impact on, on virus survivability. All of our current research, which we update on a biweekly basis, is available at www.pork.org backslash PED. And that is subdivided into 2013 and 2014 um, for all of the different research projects that we have going on. One of the things that we've tried to do is to take a lot of this information that we've learned as, with Benchtop Science and try to put that into a usable format for producers and practitioners as they're going out to work with their clients. So one of the things that we had had a working group developed of producers, manure haulers, uh, veterinarians to come up with some guidelines. And what I have up here up on the screen shows the different recommendations for manure handling and manure pumping. Um, and so obviously John's going to go over some of the surveys and some of the, the difficulties with some of those things. But we at least wanted to have some of the guidelines out there for, for consideration. Other information uh, it covers things like feed delivery, how to cleanly and securely deliver feed to multiple farms, general transportation, biosecurity protocols, as well as truck wash protocols. And so it deals, uh, gives people information and guidelines on how to securely deal with all of these areas where you're having to move to multiple farms and or potentially coming into contact with contaminated manure. Other resources that we have include exhibitor and organizer biosecurity. Uh, because of our very vibrant show industry, we wanted to make sure that we had resources for them as well and to educate on the, the possibility and the risks of PED spread. And so uh, we have those documents available as well as information on breeding herds in nursery and grow finish, um, how do we deal with a line of separation and clean crossings. Um, so a lot of that information is again available at pork.org. So in summary, PED is a newly emerging disease of swine that really has proven to be costly to producers and to the industry as a whole. Um, our main focus is really on biosecurity, basically trying to reduce the spread through the fecal oral route. However, we are also focusing on what are some of the other risks and risk factors, such as importing different feed ingredients and movements of trailers, to really try to ratchet down and say, what are our risks as we look at normal everyday production, and what do we do about that? So there's still a need to continue to focus our efforts for research, not only on PED, but also on other viruses, and try to plan for the next time. Because unfortunately, we'd, we'd like to think that there, this is it. There will not be another emerging disease. However, that likelihood is pretty low. So as an industry, we want to be prepared for the next time so producers don't have such a, an impact as they have with PED.
And with that, I will wrap it up and turn it over to John.